Okay, this week's uh, image is a shot by uh, Sam Malone, and it's a shot from an old growth forest on the Pacific coast. Uh, they think it's a Sitka spruce, and I'm pretty sure it is a Sitka spruce. Uh, and Sam is having trouble bringing this flat raw file to life without making it look too HDR. Okay, so this is the uh, raw file, and as you can see, the raw file isn't really flat. It's a, a little bit underexposed, uh, but that's fine. We can bring up those uh, shadows and also play around with the highlights to give this a little bit more depth. Uh, I did notice that in the raw file here, this foreground is a little bit out, which is not a huge deal. Uh, but as we look in on the, uh, the JPEG of the finished image, <clears throat> this is it here. If I zoom in on the foreground here, uh, it looks like it's been focus stacked. So there, there is some weird, weird things happening in there, but uh, they're not really that noticeable. The uh, the finished photograph has definitely been cropped, and it does look a little bit flatter than the original, but it's still acceptable. I think uh, with just a little bit of careful dodging and burning and contrast control we could really bring this to uh, to life. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab the raw file here and I'm just gonna do some really basic uh, editing on this. Uh, first, I'm just gonna grab the blacks, press Option or Alt on a PC and I just wanna see where the blacks are and I'm gonna bring those blacks up just ever so slightly and then the same with the uh, the whites. Now you can see in here that the whites are slightly over, which isn't a huge deal. We'll bring the highlights down like so. And then I'm just gonna bring up the shadows. Now this will flatten it out there. Uh, the color temperature I quite like. Uh, the exposure, actually, why don't we bring that up ever so slightly and just check on the highlights again. Still good. Yeah, still good. All right, so let's start with this file here and, uh, and see what we can do with it. So we're just going to right click and this one we're gonna edit in Photoshop. All right, we have a file in Photoshop. First thing I'm gonna do is grab the levels and I'm just gonna go over these shadows and highlights again. Option Alt. I usually like to bring everything just to the brink. It's just a personal preference of me, that the, mine. There's no, um, this isn't something that you should do. Uh, it's just something that I do in my own processing. Okay, it looks pretty good. All right. So we want to decide what we're going to do with this photograph. I'd like to bring out some more uh, contrast in the in the trunk here and help it look a little bit more three dimensional. I'd also like to brighten up the highlights on the back on these um, the tips of these trees and shrubs. So what we're going to do is use luminosity masks in this. So I'd like to brighten up some of these areas here, but try not to affect the, the brightest, brightest areas. So we're just gonna go into Lumenzia here. And I've said this a number of times in a lot of my videos, I use the very basic uh, luminosity masks. Um, I don't try to confuse things for myself. So you'll notice that if we pick, what we're trying to do is pick an area that where the highlights will be bright and white but the brightest of whites will be actually black. And you can see in this one, so we just turn this off. You can see that if we look at the, the whites here, this area here, um, if we go to this LM1 here, you'll notice that the area around it is quite bright but the actual highlights themselves are black. And that, that would be a good mask to try. 
the other option might be medium or mid tones. Uh, that would work as well. Uh, let's go with the medium, the mid tones. So we're going to select that. And I'm going to pick a uh, dodge tool and command H just to get rid of the marching ants. You'll notice that in the panel here, there's some, uh, there's a red dotted line. That means that the, the mask is active. So we're going to make a, a nice brush here, zero hardness and make sure we're on white. And the flow, I'm going to bring down to five or six percent. And then we're just going to start painting that area in. So basically, we're just brightening up those mid tones in the background there. And we could do it back here as well. Because there was some nice fog there, it looks like. So why not enhance that a little bit? There we go, that's pretty good. Okay, the next thing I want to do is brighten up the tips of these trees. So Command uh, D will get rid of that mask. And I'm going to pick a mask that will pick out those um, the tips of those trees there. So let's have a look in Lamenzia here. We could try uh, M again. That does a pretty good job. Okay, so let's go with mid-tones this time. So it's going to select that. And again, I'm going to grab a dodge tool. Command H to get rid of those. Just zoom in a little bit here. B for brush. And let's see what this does here. So the idea is to try and brighten up the brighter tips of the trees without affecting the background too much. Now it will brighten up the foggy areas, but that's okay. And back here. Try a bit on this side. Again, as I've said in pretty much all of my videos, the idea is to add contrast or micro contrast to the little areas to bring out some nice depth in the in the photograph. All right, let's have a look at that. So here is now and this is after. So you can see that we've brightened up those background spots there. So now what I want to do is brighten up some of the areas in the tree here, especially this side here. If we look at this carefully, you can see that this is quite dark here, but this is a little bit lighter. So if we can brighten up that lighter area, that will actually give the tree some dimension. So let's uh, try some masks for that. This is where subtlety comes in and it's very easy to overdo this, but I'll give it a go. So we're going to go into Lemmenzia here and see if we can find a mask that just kind of highlights some of the darker areas in this tree here. That works quite well. That's too much. Uh, Mid-tones. Let's try the DM1 here. Let's select that. And I'm just going to grab the dodge tool again. I'm just going to hide the marching ants. Just zoom out a bit here. Got B for brush. Now then, we're just going to reduce this, the size of this a little bit. And I'm just going to start up here. This is kind of cheating a little bit, but this I do this quite often. Just clicked on the top there and then just going to go down to the bottom here and push the shift key. And just go up and down, pushing the shift key. So basically it's just forming a straight line between the bottom and the top, and then just dodging those areas using that mask. 
Now that's probably enough. You'll notice now if we if we check out this uh, mask here, we brightened up that central portion considerably. And if you find yourself overdoing this, uh, what you can do is just um, just bring it down a little bit with the opacity here. We're going to leave that as it is now. And then what I'm going to do now is just grab burn tool. Uh, make sure you turn that mask off. And I'm just going to burn in the side here ever so slightly. Now we have to be careful here. Bring the brush down pretty small. I just clicked and shift. And that actually might be probably enough. Um, as you can see, we've kind of enhanced the shadow a little bit to darken that side just to give it some depth. By doing that though, we've darkened some of the moss here. So what we can do, or what we could have done, is just avoided that by not going over that branch. And we could we could easily get rid of that. So we just go in, just grab a, a mask that's in that burn area. And we're just going to grab a black paintbrush. Let's just zoom into that area there. Zoom into this spot here. We've got a black paintbrush. And uh, we'll just paint that out. Actually, we, let's bring this up to 100%. We're just going to paint that bit that we burnt in there. Was there any others in here? Maybe just in there. I think it was just that one branch. And if there's any areas on the edge here that we've gone over, we can just tidy that up a little bit. And again, if you feel like you've done too much, then you can just bring the opacity down. Let's say something like that. And the, the white area, we can bring that down a little bit as well. <clears throat> so if we gather all of these layers up, so we grab all of them, Command G makes it into a group. And we'll just toggle that on and off. You can see what we've done here to add depth to that tree. And again, if you know if you find yourself wanting to change some of this, you've, you think you've overdone it. And sometimes it's a good idea to uh, back away from the image for a while, a few hours or a day or so, and go back to it. And then, you know, if it looks like it's it's overdone, then uh, just tone those effects down ever so slightly. Like so. And then lastly, uh, I like to add a little bit of a curve. So what we're going to do here is just grab uh, the shadows and then the highlights. And I'm just going to bring that down just ever so slightly and then bring up the highlights ever so slightly. So we're just adding more contrast to the overall scene. That's probably too much. Let's bring that down ever so slightly. For those of you that aren't familiar with curves, very easy. The right side are your highlights, the left side are your shadows. And of course the middle is the midtones. So whenever you bring down, say, uh, these points down here, this is your shadows down here. That'll affect your shadows. And this point will affect the highlights. All right. I hope that helps. Um, 
obviously this has more contrast now than the original and when it comes to the fog in the background and how much contrast you want to add that's entirely up to you all right let me know your thoughts uh, leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the video please be sure to give me a thumbs up it's always appreciated and uh, keep an eye out for this Sunday's video where I go to a new area and photograph a brand new waterfall. All right, till next time. Bye-bye.